Well, good morning, Kathleen. It's morning for you and um, late afternoonish for us. Uh, we're from the Dutch Art Box. I'm Jocelyn. And I'm Jean. And we empower artists with the right marketing skills to sell their artwork and to, to have to get to create a successful art company. And today we have Kathleen Denny, an artist in Florida. And Kathleen, welcome. And can you please tell us something about yourself? Thank you. It's so nice to be here and um, such a pleasure. And I'm honored to be on your your site with you. This is exciting. Um, oh, gosh, about myself. Um, I have always been involved in art from the time I can remember. My parents gave me art lessons when I was four years old, and that captured my heart. And here I am much, much older <laughs> and uh, still still painting and creating. So. And you, you have a, an art studio uh, in your house? I do. I have a tiny art studio. Um, I would love to have a big, gorgeous studio like so many of my friends have. But in my area, I'm in the... Uh, West Palm Beach area in South Florida. The uh, I have not been able to find something that's suitable. So here I am in my my little studio, and I make do. I um, have learned with a small space, you have to stay very organized and keep your things, you know, put away because you're on top of yourself with everything. But um, yeah. yeah, we know all about that, don't we? Oh yes. <laughs> Okay, and um, Kathleen, you're into licensing your art. Do you used to license your art. Uh, how does that work exactly? What are your What are your experiences with licensing your art? Oh well, um, yes, <laughs> I have a lot of experience with licensing your my art. Um, I got into it with. Out even knowing what licensing was I've always kind of done things in an unconventional way and so uh, it sort of fell into my lap um, I was a graphic design major in college and worked as a graphic designer for a number of years and when I got married I went to an art festival with my husband and I looked at some art booths and I said I want to do that I want to I want to paint and and have you know be in shows and so I started to paint and started to enter some of the art festivals in our area and uh, became very popular with that and then I was in a gift shop um, during that time and saw some art on rugs little throw rugs oh maybe three by four or a little smaller and it was beautiful artwork very well made my husband looked at the um, at the tag to see where they were from, and he contacted the company and said, "How can we get uh, some images of my wife's artwork put on rugs because we do art festivals and we'd like to have them and sell them in our booth?" And so, lo and behold, this company came back with, "We love your." wife's artwork and we would like to start with five images <laughs> we were like start with what <laughs> we had no idea what had just happened um they were one of the best companies in the country they were called uh toland t-o-l-a-n-d uh they make rugs pillows here's one of the pillows i have here with me um oh gosh banners uh, for your outdoors, uh, flags, uh, just a number of products. So they said, well, this is what we do. We take your wife's art, we put it on our products, we manufacture it, we sell it around the country and uh, in gift shops everywhere. And we will give you I think it, it was either between five and 10%. It, it always varied. Royalties usually never go higher than 10. You try not to go lower than five. Uh, so um, we said, sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Plus we ordered some rugs to do in our art festival. Oh, wow. So, um, 
yeah, from there, uh, companies, uh, the, the next one that got in touch with me was a company called Keller Charles, and they do melamine uh, products. Here's a couple here, some bowls mm. uh, with my art on it. Um, they also do, uh, let's see what I have here, plates and trays. Um, here's some little dinner plates. And of course, I had the pleasure of having these in my house because they would send us samples all the time, enough that it filled a two-car garage <laughs> with samples <laughs> from all these companies. But um, so anyways, that company got in touch with me and said, we saw your art in Toland's catalog. And we would like to also have your art on our product. I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> that sounds fun. Um, so and the ball so, started rolling. Yeah. What's that? So the ball started rolling. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, so, you know, as an artist, I think we all go through um, days where we're like, I can't paint. What am I doing? I need to take up another profession. And I was having one of those days and my husband said, uh, honey, I think you need to take this phone call. And so I got on the phone and it was um, the largest wallpaper con company in our country, uh, largest and best. No and way. they wanted a wallpaper book of wow. my art. And so this was a good six month project. Um, they then merged with the world's largest. Oh my goodness. Books are heavy. <laughs> the world's largest company. And they did a second wallpaper book of my art. Um, and just tons and tons of different color waves and borders and, um, just it was it was amazing that is uh, amazing so um so one thing a lot of luck because back then there weren't computer programs to uh to set to do repeats for wallpaper so i had to match everything from one end to come wrap around to the other end was not easy but just amazing <laughs> wow yeah and they said uh, well, to start with, we'd like to give you a twenty thousand dollar deposit. Uh, oh. Not doesn't come off of your royalties. That's just to get you started. And this goes back. Uh, this was the early '90s, so that was quite a bit of money. I mean, that would be quite a bit now, even. But um, it was a nice, a nice surprise. Wow! And that opened up the whole yeah, world for me. Thing. That is amazing. And the quick question, how does it work with copyrights? What goes on with copyright? Do you still own the images? Uh, that's a very, very good question and something to consider. My very first licensing account before Toland, which I don't really consider it getting into licensing because I didn't even know, but um, Jimmy Buffett's company, um, Margaritaville, they contacted me to use my art on some of their products. And we thought, oh, that's exciting. You know, I grew up in the going to the Florida Keys and it was all about this whole lifestyle of South Florida and sunshine and coconut trees and margaritas. And, and so um, said, sure. And they kept the rights to my art and they gave me just a fee to use it on their product. And we learned from that, that you never do that. Never ever give away your rights to your art. You keep the copyrights yourself and you are licensing it to them to use. And you have to be very specific with your contracts and have it for either a certain period of time and also specific to the that product. We have been in, um, and I, I don't know if you're familiar with Bed Bath & Beyond, but in our country, it's a very popular store. Um, and I've been in line in Bed Bath & Beyond and saw my art with this lady who was checking out in front of me on various products that I did not give approval to. Oh, no, and, seriously. Yeah. Oh, yeah, these kind of things happened a lot. Um, I 
uh, contacted the company who I knew was using those products and said, I didn't give you the rights for that. And oh, oh, well, we were we were gonna let you know. It's like, yeah, sure. Let's just make sure it's in the check. <laughs> so um, yeah, you have to be very specific which products. And if they want more products, they want a longer period of time, again, another contract. But you never give your rights away. No. Oh, that's uh, the hard way to learn, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. You have to be careful. Um, unfortunately, uh, in China, the laws are different. So most of these products, most of these companies, they make them in China. And um, if uh, if someone is manufacturing it in China, they are allowed to take that product, that image down the street to their buddies and reproduce that product and sell it. Now, this is what I've been told and by a lawyer and sell it in their country. Really? Once, they, once they sell it back to a United States company, then it becomes illegal for the United States company who bought it if it wasn't licensed through me, if they stole my image. So that happened on several occasions. And um, usually like a friend will see it somewhere and say, hey, is this your product? I'm like, uh, it's my image. It wasn't supposed to be on that. And I'd get in touch with them. And um, gosh, uh, the one company that did that, it's a Publix market uh grocery stores here in our country in in Florida and they didn't know they didn't realize it it was an accident they wanted to still use the product for their whole summer season and ended up um paying me royalties back ordered back um invoices and going forward and um it was a large large chunk of money um, and they were very honest about it. Most companies are honest. Once they find out, they're like, oh, sorry. Some of them aren't. Some of them will take me to court. Oh, no, really? Yeah. And there are specific lawyers out there who do this, who uh, work with licensed artists to fight for them. I happen to have a friend in the industry, and she knows all about the law of it. And I was always able to just go to her and then she would contact a lawyer if she needed to, and she would take care of it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, good to know. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So something that every artist should be on the lookout for, you, you need to have your work. Uh, you need the copyrights. You need to organize that so that you can prove that it's yours and when you made it. And then you need to be vigilant and on the lookout for people that use your images on things that you haven't agreed to. And there's a, uh, a, a inexpensive way to copyright your work. Uh, first of all, you put a C with a circle on all your images, and then um, you can take a picture of it and mail it to yourself. And you can do a, a clump of them. It doesn't have to be like each individual one. You could do like, say, a, a group, a series of 10 or 20 images. Mail them to yourself and don't open the open the uh, envelope. Don't and open Don't open it. Oh, really? Hold. And then wow. that is legally bound that it's gone through the government, I guess. Is oh, I see. That yeah. so, so that you can prove yeah. when you made it. Yeah. yeah. But we also used to... Uh, do groups like maybe 20 images at a time and file them with the copyright office. So we oh, yeah. would cover ourselves both ways, especially after my work got really popular and I'd see it everywhere. Now a company, uh, an artist is allowed to change something 30% and be considered legal. So they can take your image and as long as they've altered it 30%, you really can't do anything about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Tricky business. <laughs> yeah. Lucrative, but tricky. Yeah, you need to be uh, on the lookout. Yeah, be creative. Um, um, and do you have any other examples? You have a catalog there with your, do you want to maybe share your screen and oh. show us what you have there? Oh, certainly. Let me do that. Okay. So... Uh, this is my art as a little kid. When you asked how I got started, <laughs> here I am. 
and uh, went into dance and modeling and away from the arts. Um, always came back to it, high school, college, here as a graphic designer. Um, this was a great revelation of realizing that I had artistic talent because I was flunking out of school. I was having a really good time in college, <laughs> um, but ended up doing this project that I got an A on and started taking my art seriously. Um, and uh, here, right after college, I was a dolphin cheerleader um, mm -hmm. and uh, wanted to do photography, had professors kind of steer me away from it, um, said, be a graphic designer and you can always you know, do much more with it. And I'm, I'm glad kind of that they did. Uh, here are some of my designs that I did. Um, I don't know if you have the Tabasco hot sauce over in your country. Yes, um, we do. Yeah, you know. Oh, that's cool. I will claim the fame there it was the logo for their, oh, their uh, pepper, hot pepper sauce or some one of their sauces. Um, so here was the Jimmy Buffett art that got used uh, for that first account. Um, it wrapped around, I think, like on T-shirts and mugs and caps, um, postcards and various things. Um, and here was some of my art that was in the art festival. Um, didn't know how to, uh, you know, didn't have much money starting out. And my husband and I created that little greeting card box that you see on the top right there. And he was a yacht captain and he would take an, take these images. They were photographs. Cause again, there weren't computers back then. He would take these photographed, uh, photographs that were placed on hard stock for note cards uh, with him on the yacht when he would stop at a marina at night and say, you know, would you like a, you know, a hundred dollar order of my art's white, uh, my wife's art. And that's how I got started. Well, these two images here became extremely popular in licensing. Mm -hmm. So doing the festivals, as I said, and then wanted to uh, get on rugs. Well, here's that company, Toland, who, um, selected on the left those five images those were the first ones they started with that got me going and um this was the second company this was keller charles now you know things things never stay the same as we know in life and the same thing with licensing this um was i was their number one artist uh out of all of their many artists that they had and um quarterly my checks were at least twenty thousand nice. dollars and so um he uh was in a dental ch dentist chair and he had a heart attack and died oh. his sister took over the business she didn't like my art and she never used a single image oh. <laughs> so, like go figure you know just things change yeah. um so that was the wallpaper book. Here's some of a close up of some of the images. Um, I had uh, at this time I had about five employees who worked with me to create such things as these borders. Um, they would take my art and prepare it to the size of products. Um, and here, this is a picture of. Lic the licensing show in New York City. And I don't know if you want me to talk about that at this point or you want me to get right to the products first. Oh no, Maybe. this is interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so after that wallpaper company discovered me, we found out, I mean, everything was just like by chance. So we found out that there is a, a trade show for this industry. And in uh, in the States here, it's called the Licensing Show. I looked it up this morning to see if it still exists. And it does, but I think they changed the name a little bit. It's in the Jacob Javits Center. And um, it, it <laughs> we felt like uh, you probably aren't familiar with Jed Clampett from the Beverly Hillbillies show. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, here we are going to New York City and we've got this van with all this stuff in it and we don't know what in the world we're doing. And uh, we set up and it was spectacular. We got so many new accounts. It was amazing. It's like all these companies just fell in love with my art and 
We continued to do the licensing show for many years um, and uh, ended up with eventually 40, 40 different corporations that we were dealing with, with all these contracts and all the employees getting all these images ready. And um, yeah, it was very, very exciting. Oh, you um, have a huge business. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I remember one time uh, meeting my husband up in Orlando because we had to meet with a client there. Now, Orlando, I'm sorry, you don't, you're not familiar with it. Probably uh, it's about from where I was, maybe a two hour train ride. Oh. And so uh, he had a car. So it was like, well, I don't want to drive my car. So I'll get on the train and meet him up there. But I had deadlines. Like you are constantly working under deadlines quarterly for these companies. It's a uh, seasonal. So what is for, you know, fall, what's for Christmas, what's for spring, you know, what's for summer, you like all the holidays they want, like, what do you have next? What's next? What's next? And if you don't keep on top of it, there's other artists that come in and, you know, it's kind of take your place. So, um, so I'm taking this train ride and I had to paint these roses, a set of roses and the train ride was bumpy. So it kind of gave me this loose impressionistic style <laughs> to my, uh, to the, to that particular design. It was, that was, <laughs> fun. But anyways, this right here, we discovered, uh, well, actually, we started getting asked to come to the merchandise show in Atlanta. And uh, there's the merchandise mart. And there's also merchandise shows around. There was one in California that we were asked to come there as well. And the companies themselves have booths in the merchandise mart. And so I'm coming to them to do signings. So if it was coasters, so like here is one of my little coasters, um, they would have like markers and I would sign the coasters. And so the stores would go to buy product for their, their stores, you know, for that season. So they would have me sign it and then they might stick it, like frame it and put it on their wall in their stores that, you know, Kathleen Denis came, you know, I got to meet her and she signed my coaster and it was like a big deal. Uh, so there would be like 20, 30 people waiting in line for me to sign these things down here in the bottom left. You can see their little plates. And I think I have one here as well. Like here is a little plate. And, you know, I would sign it for them. Well, what we discovered is all of these companies are already there. So unlike New York City, where we had to pay, uh, gosh, back then it was $10,000 for a double booth, plus all the expense to go to New York City, the hotels and all. What I found here at the Merchandise Mart is that as long as you can get a pass to get in the Merchandise Mart, which of course I was able to because these companies invited me. Um, I don't, not sure how you would get in. Otherwise, probably you'd have to show proof of a store. Maybe you'd have a store, a friend that owns a store and you could get in on their, their card or their license. But anyways, um, it's a way that you can go and meet with all of these companies. Mm. So I could walk around, gosh, I think it was like, I don't know, five stories of, um, of floors of shops really? one after another after another after another and you could just go and go wow i think my art would look good on that product and we'd go in and say you know is your manager here we you know licensing manager we'd like to introduce ourselves and this is who we are is what we do and set up a time with them or they'd say you know yeah sit down let's talk and okay we want you or no it's not a fit so we discovered that as well um, clever. It's a clever way of uh, meeting companies. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, one of the ways too that we found that doesn't cost you anything as an artist is you go into a gift shop and you see a product that you go, I think my art would look good on that. You simply turn it over and you look, well, that one doesn't have a label. Let me see if I can find one with a label um let's see here so here is um amia these are um uh stained glass 
uh, wall, stained glass art that you hang, you know, like with a little sticker or you hang it in your window. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say I saw that in a store on a shelf. Um, I would pick it up and my husband and I would do this all the time. We'd pick it up and we'd look for a name of a company. So this one is AMIA. And then it says Denver, Colorado. Well, we would look them up and contact them I and, know. you know, and, and say, can we speak to someone about licensing? And this is my art. And, you know, a lot of times they would say, well, send us a copy of, you know, send us something and we'll take a look at it. That's, so yeah, that's yeah. a very good idea. So you can go into any gift shop store uh, and look around, look at the products and check out the labels and yeah. find out a new a new company that you could contact to ask about licensing. That's a good idea. Mm, very yeah. much. And it doesn't cost you anything except your time to contact them and, and a little bit of your ego, because if they say no, we're not, we're not interested. <laughs> but, but then all it takes is that one to say, yeah, we love your work. We'd love to have it. Yeah. So, so let me see. So here's some products. Um, I put this in here so you can see how I would build an image. Um, that border on the top left does not coincide with this particular product, but um, I couldn't find something with that on it. But so the top left, so I would paint that. And then our graphic designer would put that into layers. So she would cut all of those things out, put it into layers, and then I would work with her to begin to build designs. And I had just hundreds and hundreds of backgrounds I would even like peel bark off of trees and have that scanned anything oh. that I found interesting it might bubble wrap scan that you know just whatever I think might be interesting so here you can see this is the artwork on the left and then here it is put into a design so I would paint this border that you see on the outsides and then the graphic designer would put it in with different filters and whatnot. When I was a graphic designer, unfortunately it was before computer. So I didn't learn how to do this, but I'd have fun like saying, you know, hey, let me take the mouse and let me uh, drive for a little bit. But um, that's how we would create different images. So here, just a ton more of products. Um, and then here I'll, I'll hold off because that was when I started to make some changes and um do you want me to come back to stop share or oh yeah yeah let's uh let's put our yeah that's it there you go well it's an amazing story it really <laughs> is is there a product out there or or yeah a, a product that you your aunt has not been on um hmm <laughs> oh we're on bedding uh fabrics um Oh gosh, uh, so many things. I think uh, toilet paper, probably the only thing. We're on tissue, <laughs> you your nose on. Um, you know, one of the interesting things too is that uh, a lot of these companies would have me come to their factories and watch my product being made. Oh, that looks, sounds like fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the wallpaper company. They were very um, archaic, I guess, if that's the right word. They had gallon jugs all around their warehouse and while this amazing press uh printing press that was like uh gosh i don't know how many feet very large <laughs> um was you know sending out put, printing out samples of my work they'd say you know what changes and i might say well it's too blue or it's too green or it's too dark they would go over with like a little Dixie cup, a little paper cup, and they'd know exactly which gallon of paint to go to oh. and dip in with a Dixie cup and pour it into the machine. Oh. Like it was even done digitally back then. Yeah. These, they, they knew they did it for so long that they knew they had an eye and knew exactly what to do. Um, but uh, they shut that factory down, which was really sad because it was in a small town in New York and a lot of people lost their jobs. But but several of the companies, California, they had me come out and watch the ceramics being made of my work. And um, yeah, lots of interesting things. Wow. Would and would you do you have any tips for artists uh, that are 
considering licensing there aren't have you got any um let's say uh tips why why would you go into licensing what has been beneficial for you why why would you recommend someone do that hmm. um well i have to say it's fun yeah. it's so exciting to walk in a store and see my art uh don't that doesn't happen as often anymore because i don't work the business like i used to um and my husband no longer works in it with me and uh so um, but still, uh, Home Goods. I don't know if you're familiar with Home Goods. They um, carry my art on uh, po a big canvas art. So I walk in, walk into there, and I'm like, "Oh, that's my art!" And I meet the manager, and then he wants to take a picture with me. And and then I hear the stories of, you know what? I can't afford an original, but I love having your art in my house. I'll get emails all the time from people that say, you know, and send me pictures like, oh, this placemat. I look at it every morning when I have my coffee with your coffee cup. And it just brings me so much joy. And that to me brings joy, oh. you know, to make someone else happy. Um, I um, love giving gifts to people. And we still have several things in our garage that we can gift to our friends or you know people that we just meet or workmen that come to our house like here have a set of coasters uh, but like i said we had a two-car garage and it was stacked with boxes of all of samples that they would send us and uh actually i started selling those and using the money to go back to help girls who were getting out of prison who needed um to get a, a start in a home and so um, through our church, they had a home that they were setting up for these girls to get them back on their feet. And this money from the sales of all of the products that were free to me, I was able to uh, give to them to help them. So, oh, that's, an, that's very nice. That's a very nice story. Yeah. Very yeah. You know, there's always some, some way to, to help others out. Um, you know, it's another way is, um, you know, encouraging artists because they'll see my art on product. How did that happen? Well, I get to encourage them because it can be discouraging sometimes as an artist, you know, there's so many ups and downs. Yeah. So, you know, that's another thing that's a, a big plus, but, you know, financially, if you work it and work really hard with it, um, financially, you can make a very good living. I, um, have considered many times of, you know, starting to paint specific images again, once again, for licensing and, and try to do more with it myself. So. Yeah. Well, I, th I've thoroughly enjoyed this interview and we've learned a lot. Yes. Definitely. And I think you will inspire a lot of uh, artists out there that are watching this um, yeah, to give it a go and to really uh, put the time and effort in and with the tips that you've given, I, I think they'll uh, have a good shot at it. Absolutely, yeah. Very okay. instructional. Thank you very much, Kathleen. And we wish you a very nice day. It's uh, end of the morning, I think, for you. So you're just sort of starting your day and we're ending our day. Yes, we're going to have a glass of wine now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll hold off. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure to be here. Thanks. We'll let you know when this um, interview uh, is has been posted on the site. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye for now.